Good morning, friends. I want to say welcome to our online worship time. My name is Sam. I'm the pastor here at Vernonia Church, and I'm so glad that you've joined us today. In just a few moments, we're going to continue our series where we've been talking about prayer, who and how. And I'm going to share with you a message today about praying for others. And it's going to be a great day. Before we dive in, though, just have a few things I'd like to encourage you to do as we go through this worship time today. One of them is this. While I'm talking, would you hit the link below that says connection card and and just fill it out. Let us know that you're here. Communicate with us. Connect with us. Uh, let, let us know who you are so that we could be praying for you. Also, if you have prayer requests, there's a link below that you can click and you can send us prayer requests, things that we can be praying for you about. Today, we're talking about praying for others and I would love to be praying for you and the things on your heart and your mind and I I just like to partner with you in prayer in your life. Uh, Another thing I want to encourage you to do today as we're going through this message is interact. If you're joining us on uh, on Facebook or you're joining us on the website, uh, which by the way you can join us on the website too, that's a great way to to join us for online worship uh, at www.vernonia.church. There's a a place there you can click the tab watch watch online worship live uh, you could also be with us on youtube you could be with us on uh on on all the audio, uh, whether it's iTunes and and podcast or you're on Spotify. Uh, I just want to welcome all of you, but I want to encourage you to interact today. You know, send us comments. Let us know what you you think. Uh, Let us know that God is speaking to you or how he's speaking to you. Just want to encourage some interaction today. Also want to encourage you, if something that is said today or something that happens today is a blessing to you, if it helps you in your spiritual life, I want to encourage you to share it. Share this message. Share it. Help us help you be a blessing to the people in your life. That said, I uh, want to encourage you to do that. I we'll also want to let you know, those of you who are our guests today online, we have a, a gift we'd love to give you. It's a book called Unshakable. It's about how to have unshakable faith faith during times that that can be difficult or tough. It's a book that was developed by a, a pastor, a couple of pastors who who, who kind of took all the prayer requests that were coming into their church and they took some of the most common prayer requests, most common situations people were dealing with, and they wrote a chapter about each one. And so so it's a really good book. It's a blessing. It's a, it's a helpful book. And I'd love to give one of those to you as a gift today. So there's a, a on your comment uh, card, or sorry, on your connection card, not a comment card, on your connection card, uh, you, can, you can click that and there's a spot to click that you want one of the unshakable books and and we'll we'll make sure that we uh, get you one. So that said, guys, I'm just so excited that you're here today to worship with me. And I want to pray. I want to pray for you and I want to pray with you that God blesses us today and teaches us and that he just does ministry through this online worship time today. So let's pray together. God, our Father, you're such a good God. God, you, you you are so amazing in the way that you care for us. And at the same time, God, you encourage us to care for one another. You encourage us to be praying and going on behalf of the people in our life, the people we care about, the people we love, especially, God, the, the people that we have we have been brought together with through the blood of Christ. That God, the, the people in our church, the people who are here with online worship, the, the people who are a part of this, God, you, you want us praying for one another. And I pray that you will teach us and encourage us today to do just that. But not only, not, not only one another, but God, you want us to be praying for the people outside of the church. And so we want to be doing that too, because we want to have the heart of a God who sends his son to bring salvation to lost people. And we want to have that same heart. And so we want to be praying too for the people in our life who are unchurched and and who are in our community. And so God, we want to pray for others today. We pray for ourselves that you would connect with us today and teach us and help mold us into people who who know how to pray for others. And and God, uh, I just pray your blessing 
at this time as we worship you together. It's in Jesus' name we all prayed and everybody said together, amen. Uh, so so wanna wanna just thank you for being here with us today and let's dive in to our message time. Well, this morning I'd like to just dive into our message here together where we're gonna be talking about praying for others. And, and you know, we're, we're gonna be looking at uh, Jesus and his prayer in John 17 as he prays for others. Before we get, get, get really into it though, I'd like to share with you three stories that I wanna kinda have you hold on to as we go through this message together. And, and the first story is a story about a, a, an older fella who calls me regularly. You know, th this fellow will call me maybe once, maybe twice a month, sometimes a little bit more than that. And he began calling me years ago. I really didn't know this fella. Uh, I was introduced to him. And, and after that, he began calling me regularly and praying for me. He's an older, retired uh, pastor. He's been retired from ministry. And he just has this heart uh, for our church. He has a heart for for ministers and pastors and 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 God just laid it on his heart to be someone who would call me regularly and, and usually the way the phone call goes is this fellow will call and I'll answer the phone and and he'll say well hello dear brother and and then he'll start to ask me some questions he'll say how is your lovely wife doing and and I'll give him an update about what's happening in my wife's life about how things have been going what going on in her life and and he'll say something along the lines of you have no idea how precious she is to you and to your ministry and and how God has blessed you with your wife and and I'll say you're right I probably don't know how blessed I am uh, to have her in my life and then he will ask me about my kids he'll say well tell me about your oldest daughter and and uh, he knows all my kids by name uh, my kids don't know him very well but he knows a lot about them because this is how it goes he'll say tell me about your kids and I'll tell him what's happening in my oldest daughter's life and and share with him the things she's been up to share with him the maybe some of the struggles maybe some of the good times and the bad whatever's going on in her life and 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 he will he will then he'll say well, well what about your other daughter you know your 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 middle child what's going on in her life and I'll do the same thing I'll, I'll share what's going on in her life and and uh, just just give an update about what they're up to what the kids have been doing and and then he'll say well what about that son of yours you know he he, he always throws in something. I'll bet he's getting pretty rambunctious. And, and I'll start telling him about my son and tell him about my son's interests and what he's up to. And, and he will then finish that part of the conversation, usually saying something along the lines of, you are so blessed. You're so blessed to have these kids in your life. And God has given you these precious children. And, and, and he just gives me this reminder about how blessed I am. I am to have my kids in my life and and then he'll ask another question he'll say well what about the church you know tell me what's happening in the life of Vernonia Church and I'll give him updates about what's happening in the church I'll tell him about baptisms I'll tell him about attendance I'll, I'll tell him about how online church is going I'll, I'll tell him about maybe some of the 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 challenges or the struggles or or whatever it is that's going on at the time I will tell him all about Vernonia church and and he knows a lot of you in the church he knows a lot of you because he's been praying about you and he's been asking about you and even some of you he knows to ask for by name and he'll say well why don't you tell me about this family and and why don't you tell me about that family and and it'll just be this conversation where I'm sharing with this fella my life I'm sharing with him the church uh, what's happening in the church's life what's happening in my wife and my kids and, and he'll say something like you are so blessed to be in a place where you can serve God and where you can serve others and and what a privilege it is to share God's word and to share the message of Jesus with people and he sort of reminds me about how blessed I am to have the position I have and God is good and then we'll finish the conversation and and he will say hey can I pray 
for you. And really, that was his intention all along. He just wanted to know how he could pray and what we what we needed to be praying about. And so he was just asking all these questions to bring up, what is there that I can be praying for you about? And, and as we talk about praying for others, that's one thing you might think about is when you pray for others, it, it's something that helps you build a relationship with someone else. It, it's also something that, that you don't have to just say, oh God, I, I, I I pray for for Ronald and and I pray for him but I don't know what he needs or what he, maybe sometimes just talking to Ronald and saying how's your family what's your job what's what's going on in your life man and and then praying for that and and this fella he will pray for me and uh, he almost always finishes the conversation uh, after we're about ready to say goodbye he will remind me saying keep looking up and keep marching on. And and story number one, it's not really much of a story, but it's a it's a story about someone who prays. It's a story about someone who cares and a friend who prays. So I want you to remember story number one is the friend who prays. Now now story number two, story number two is the story of a soldier who waits for help. One of the things I like to do as uh, as I'm doing other things is, is I like to listen to podcasts. I'm sort of a, I used to be a talk radio junkie, but uh, with all the politics and everything, I thought, man, I don't need to be filling my heart with all that stuff. I'm going to listen to, I still want to listen to talking, but I want to listen to some subjects or things I want to listen to. And and sometimes I'll listen to jujitsu podcasts. Sometimes I'll listen to other preachers and, and their churches podcast. And, and sometimes I listen to a podcast that's that's for soldiers, by soldiers, about soldiers. And, and, and this one time I was listening to a podcast where a soldier was explaining and describing his experience in Afghanistan. And he talked about how he and his group had to go out on patrol and they were supposed to go up onto a plateau uh, that overlooked an area that they wanted to have control over. And so so their job was to go up onto the top of this plateau and and hold it or protect it or guard it. And they, 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 they left early in the morning. They made their way up to the plateau, had gotten there uh, when they needed to. But once they got there, they realized that, man, we are not in a very safe place up here. There wasn't a lot of cover. There was no place to really hide behind anything. And, 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 and the intention was getting up on the plateau so they could be on high ground and be able to look down at anything below. But once they got up there, they realized that the hills all around them were higher than they were and that uh, the leader of this group had this uneasy feeling like there could be enemies up there looking down on us right now. And, and in the middle of having that thought, bullets began to riddle the plateau they were on. There were, in fact, enemy soldiers up in the mountains and the hills looking down on the plateau they were on. And having nothing to, 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 to hide behind for cover, the men, they, they fell and, and made themselves as tight to the ground as they could. When they had made their way up to the plateau, these soldiers were, uh, because they weren't really running into much trouble, they had gotten into the habit of not wearing their their protective gear the way they should. They were carrying their helmets, not putting them on their heads. They were they were not wearing their bulletproof vests and this and that because it was heavy and hot and everything. And, and so uh, you can imagine one of the things he said is is when we hit the ground and we tried to glue ourselves to the to the ground as tight as we could you were hoping that every little pebble was going to protect you from a bullet and those of us who had our helmets but weren't wearing them we immediately put them on and they began to radio for help and they did they radioed for help they were trapped up there they couldn't even get back down because of the way that they were trapped any movement would get shot at and and these men were 
getting shot at and bullets were riddling. Uh, 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 they were they, they were just covering the ground and, and, and bouncing off the ground. And a couple of the men had gotten injured. Uh, what, they weren't directly shot, but they were injured when bullets uh, hit and ricocheted into them. And uh, it was it was a scary situation. But what they found was when they radioed for help that there wasn't any help available right away. They were told that they were going to have to weather this storm for most of the day. And that's what they did. Every once in a while, they would try to shoot back, but there wasn't anywhere to hide. And so these men were just gluing themselves to the ground, hoping that they were going to survive this thing. And man, you could imagine the feeling of relief as they went through that hot desert sun all day long on that plateau, getting riddled with bullets, and then they began to hear the sound, the womp, womp, womp uh, of a helicopter coming in the distance. And the helicopters came up over the mountains that uh, where the where the enemies were firing at them from, and and all of a sudden these helicopters that came in as reinforcements, uh, these helicopters that came in as air support began riddling riddling their own. The, their own fire on those mountains and they began to blow those mountains up all over the place and the bullets coming down on these men uh, be, began to stop and and the unfriendlies up in the hills were running for their lives now and and this air support was so welcomed the men were cheering uh, they were forgetting themselves just a little bit as they were at one as they were as they were celebrating they're sitting up they're getting up and and they're just excited that that air support has come and then a, a an A10 big jet came flying over and it strafed the mountain with with, with all kinds of uh, uh, stuff that, uh, I don't know, bullets or whatever, that this big plane, I'm not a military guy, I don't know military terms for all this stuff, but, but all this air support came so that these men were able to get down off the, that plateau safely. And man, what a story. As I was listening to that story, I thought, what would it be like to be in a situation like that where you are under enemy fire and you, you're just waiting, waiting for, for help to come? And I, I, I want to encourage you to take this story of a soldier who waits for help and, and put that in your pocket for the rest of this story. So story number one is a story of a, of a friend who calls and who prays. And story number two is the story of a soldier who waits for help. And story number three, oh, by the way, on that story of that soldier, uh, the, the soldier ended up finishing that story by saying that they all made it off the plateau, that nobody died that day in their group. And, and it was almost miraculous that they were able to, to come down. There were some injuries, some guys did get hit with some stuff but nobody died that day and uh, and, and so that's a good part of that story and, and so story number three is the story of a shepherd's fight. Uh, th- this story is a story of a shepherd who fights and 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 it's a story from a paper in Jerusalem from the 1970s. In the 1970s, this shepherd was was bringing all of his sheep in for the night. He, he was bringing all his sheep in for the uh, into an enclosed area to protect them at night, and and he got them all in and. And during the night, to his horror, he heard all kinds of noise and all kinds of racket, and he knew what he was hearing. All of a sudden, he he rushed over to where the sound was, and what he found was a wolf in the process of attacking a sheep and trying to drag the sheep off through a hole in the wall. And, and so this shepherd, he decided that he was going to try to save his sheep. The, the shepherd began 
began to quickly hit the sheep and, and attack the sheep. And he tried to, or, or sorry, hit the wolf, not the sheep. He began to hit the wolf and attack the wolf, trying to save this sheep. And the wolf continued to bite the sheep and attack the sheep. But then as the shepherd was doing his job, the, the, the wolf decided to, to give his attention to the shepherd. And the wolf began to fight with the shepherd. This shepherd tried as hard as he could to fight that wolf off. That wolf was biting him and scratching him. The shepherd was hitting the wolf with his stick. And, 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 and eventually the shepherd was able to hit one last time. He was able to hit the wolf and kill the wolf but he had been injured very badly and the shepherd made his way over to the sheep that was injured he he sort of he sort of cuddled up with that sheep and fell asleep and in the night that shepherd passed away and the headline in the paper said this sheep alive covered in shepherd's blood and I want you to take that story, uh, the story of a, a shepherd who fights, and I want you to hold on to that story. We're going to come back to it as we talk about uh, Jesus praying for others. Now, we're in this series where we're talking about uh, prayer, who and how, and how do we pray, and who do we pray for. And we've been going through this series. We've talked about praying for those you love. We talked about praying for uh, ourselves last week. That was what we talked about. And, and now we're going to be talking about praying for others. And we've been turning to John chapter 17 for the last couple of weeks, where we've been learning from Jesus' longest recorded prayer. This is a beautiful prayer that Jesus prayed. Uh, he looked up to heaven and he said, Father, and then he just unloads his heart. He's, he, Jesus knows he's about to go to the cross. Jesus knows that, uh, th that he's getting himself ready for, for giving his life for this mission, for, for, this, for this redemptive story, for, for, for atoning for our sins. He's about to give his life, and, and he knows it, and he prays to the Father for himself, and then he prays to the Father for you and for me. And, and we're turning to John chapter 17, where we see Jesus praying. Last week, we covered the very first part of John 17, and, and this week, we're going to cover the, the last half of Jesus' prayer. And I want to just read it for you. I, I don't have it to put up here today. Uh, we're going to be, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read, we're going to come back to it all through this message and I'll have little snippets of it on the, uh, on this, uh, on the PowerPoint. But, uh, but I want to just read you Jesus prayer. And so starting in verse six of chapter 17, because we did one through five last week, it says this, Jesus prays, I have revealed you to those who you gave me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer. Jesus is telling us he's, he's about to go to the cross. But they are still in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name and the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe and gave uh, safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction, so that the scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, 
even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them, I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. And then in verse 20, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. Just a little foreshadowing. That's you and me who believe through the message of the disciples. Uh, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me. And may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you have sent me. And you have loved them even as you loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you have loved me before the creation of the world. Jesus is saying he, he wants you to be in heaven with him. He can't wait either. He, he, he's looking forward to the day that we're all together with him. In verse 25, he says, Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you. And they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and I will continue to make you known in order that the love that you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. And what a beautiful prayer Jesus prays here. He, he prays for his disciples. He prays for the Christians who will come later because of his disciples. And then he prays for, for all of us who would believe down the road. And, and he prays for, for those who are still out there in the world, who, are, who, are, who, who he's waiting for those who would hear to be pulled out of the world and, and to come to know him. And, and here we see Jesus prays for others. And if we want to learn to pray like Jesus prays, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pray for others, specifically for those who are Christians and for those who are not Christians, specifically for those who are in our church and those who are not in our church, for those who are churched and, and for those who are unchurched. Jesus says here in, in verse uh, 9, he says, I pray for them. And I wonder how, how many times when you sit down to pray, that that's what you say. I, I want to pray for them. I, I want to pray for someone else. I, I'm not just praying for me. I, I'm praying for others. And, and in verse 20 and 21, he says, I'm praying for these so that the world will believe you sent me. I, I'm praying for all these people so that the message of the gospel will, will go out and become more, uh, more uh, spread more. And, and I'm praying like this, Father. And I want you to come back to the story, the story number one, of a friend who prays. And I want to encourage you to be like that friend who prays for them. Maybe one of your next steps this week is to, to be that friend who prays, to call someone up and ask them, hey, how you doing? What's happening in your life? How's your spouse? How, how are your kids? What's happening in your family? What's school like? Uh, you, you know, and, and just ask them what's going on and then pray for that person. I want to encourage you to do that. And one thing you'll find is that your relationship will deepen because of that prayer. And, and that's what God wants. He wants us to be praying for one another and praying for others. And the blessing that happens is that your relationship grows. You might even consider some of your your relationships that should be growing and that should be strong and and think of this that 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 relationship could grow stronger through prayer you know one of the best things you could do if you're in a relationship with your spouse and you're maybe having a a little bit of a rough patch together maybe just start praying together start praying together and you'll find that bond will grow and strengthen and and you'll start to find that you're talking to God about each other and and you're asking God to bless one another and and start praying for each other uh, I want to encourage you to be that friend who prays 
But here I want to take, I want to take Jesus' prayer and talk about two categories of people we will pray for and a prayer that we might pray for them. And the first one is this. The first one, I want you to maybe write this down somewhere, but the first thing I want you to do is I want you to pray for your church family. Jesus starts out praying for his disciples who are close to him. He, he, he begins praying for Christians. And I want to encourage you, pray for Christians. Pray for your church family. Pray for Vernonia Church and, and the Christians among Vernonia Church. And, and, and the reason that I think you, we need to be praying for one another, I want to bring you back to story number two. Story number two was the story of a soldier waiting for help, a soldier who called for help, right? And that's what prayer is. As you go through Jesus' prayer here, you, you'll notice something that, that, Jesus, that, that Jesus is doing. He's praying that God will take care of his disciples and, and take care of the Christians while he's gone. Jesus knows he's going to die on the cross and give his life for us. He, he knows he's going, to, uh, he, he's going to step out of his position as their, as their rabbi in person. He knows that he's going to go to the cross and die and, and resurrect and then ascend into heaven and, and, and to be seated in the heavens to return again someday. But in the time in between, though, his, uh, in between him, uh, his ascension and his return, in that time, Time, we are going to be left here and and what he's saying is he's saying father will you protect these guys well, will you protect them as they're in the middle of this spiritual battle will you protect them and, and take care of them because they are in the world and yet they're not of the world it, rather than being of the world they're people of the word and what now we know Jesus was the word of God and, and Jesus Jesus would refer to the scriptures as the word of God or, or God's ways and God's commands as the word of God. And, and he's saying, God, will you protect them by your word? Will you take care of them by your word? They've heard your word and believed your word and they've received your word. And, and by doing that, they've come up out of the world. And so Jesus prays in verse six. He says, I have revealed you to the ones you gave me from this world. And we were from the world and they were always yours. You gave them to me and they have kept your word. And so they made a transition. They, they left the world and went to the word. And he continued in verse nine. He says, my prayer is not for the world. It's not for the world, but for those you have given me who remember came out of the world because they belong to you and I want to talk real quick about the difference between the world and the word those who live by the word live by God's ways and God's will those who pray by the word pray God your kingdom come and your will be done in my life those are the people of the word the people of the word follow Jesus become more like Jesus they they turn their back on their sin and turn their back on the world and, and turn their hearts and their face towards God and they begin to walk towards him but then there's the world now, the word world here, sometimes the word world in the scriptures will just be plain and simple, the planet or the people of the world. But usually the word world is used uh, in, in a way that it's describing something more than just the planet or the people of the world. It, it's used to describe worldliness. It's used to describe the ways of the world. And then the ways of the world are in rebellion against God. The ways of the world are against God, against Christ. They're anti-Christ. The, the ways of the world are ways of sin and deceit and, and the ways of Satan and his demons. And, and the ways of the world are, are demonic ways that, are, that, are, that, that come about because of demonic philosophies, 
demonic theologies, demonic worldview, and, and, and Satan and his demons are described throughout Scripture as, as attacking the minds and the hearts of people so that they will follow worldly ways. The ways of the world bring about destruction. The ways of the world uh, ruin your family. They ruin your relationships. The ways of the world leave you, uh, leave you in, in, in a ruined condition in your relationship with God. The ways of the world are, 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 are wicked and evil. And the truth is, all of us start and started as being a part of a rebellious world against God, uh, listening and, and abiding by and believing in these demonic philosophies, theologies, and perspectives, and, and, and worldviews. And then we were pulled out by the word. We believed in Jesus. We, we made a decision to accept him. We, we got baptized, putting to death an old self and an old life and took a hold of a new life. And, and, and we, we stepped out of the world. And all of a sudden, we become part of God's word and, and God's kingdom. And, and Jesus here, when he prays for his disciples, he's saying that, that his disciples, it's like they're on a plateau and they're being attacked by the fiery darts of the enemy and the world and and the world is going to try to pull them back in and the world is going to try to destroy them and sever their relationship with God and and the world is going to try to discourage them and and the world is going to take all kinds of actions sometimes the world will reach into the church and and come into the church and and try to to attack the church from within sometimes the world is going to attack the church from without but either Either way, uh, Jesus prayed this prayer seriously saying, my guys are in a spiritual battle in a war, a war between the word and the world. And they're not of the world and the world wants to destroy them and attack them. And so he prays, God, protect them. And what he's teaching us is that prayer is like calling in air support. It's like calling in God's uh, support over one another. Prayer is like asking God, will you bring the big A-10 uh, tank killer airplanes? Or, or God, will you send the choppers? Uh, will, will you take care of us and protect us and, and, and give us victory? When Jesus prays, he says, I'm praying not only for those disciples, but I'm praying for all who believe in me through their message. And so Jesus was even praying for you, my protection and your protection. He was praying for, for, for all of our protection, and, and he prays for us. And if we're going to pray like Jesus, we're going to pray for one another too. We're going to pray for the church, for Vernonia Church, because really we are on this plateau, and, and we are in a place where we're in a spiritual battle, where we're trying to find those uh, who will respond to the word and come out of the world, but the world doesn't want them to, to come out, and so the world is going to do all it can to stop us, and so we need to be praying for one another. And in praying for one another, we pray some specific things. First off, we want to pray for one another to glorify Jesus. We want to pray that, 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 that we would be able to glorify Jesus. God, uh, I want to pray for my brother in Christ that, that he will glorify Jesus in the way that he deals with his family struggles or in the way that he deals with his health issues. I want to pray that, that, that my brother, my sister in Christ will glorify Jesus in the way that they act while they serve you or the way that they act at work. And I just want to cover them with air support and pray that they will glorify you. You know, sometimes we spend a lot of time as Christians praying for one another. We pray for each other's problems and sicknesses. We, we pray for each other to have help from God and healing from God. And, and we pray for him to resolve our problems and situations, which is fine. I actually think that's good to pray for one another that way. But what if along with that, we just started praying, God, uh, will you... Will you help our sister in Christ to glorify you as they go through this struggle? 
God, will you help our brother in Christ to glorify you while they go through this struggle? You may not heal them. You may not take away their trouble or their trial, but God, will you help them glorify you as they go through it? I really think there's some power to that prayer. And I really think that that prayer is maybe even more important than the, than the prayer, God, will you take their problems away? Uh, I want to encourage you, pray for one another. And pray for me that we will glorify Jesus together. In John 17, 10, he says, All who are mine, you have given them to me so that they bring me glory. And that's the prayer Jesus prays. He prays that that they would glorify him. And so the next prayer we want to pray is a prayer for protection. Pray that they would be protected from the enemy. Pray that they would be protected from the attacks of the enemy. You might remember in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus taught us to pray uh, and, and lead us not into temptation or protect us from temptation uh, and, 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 and protect us from the evil one. And so here, Jesus, as he prays, in verse 11, he says, Now protect them by the power of your name. And, and I want to encourage you to be in prayer for your brothers and sisters in Christ, especially your Vernonia Church. Online worship. Uh, uh, brothers and sisters for your for your in-person church family be praying for their protection pray God will you protect them from temptations that they're dealing with God will you protect them from the hurts and the pain and the suffering that comes when we don't do things your way. God, protect them from the world, the world that's trying to drag them back in, the the world that's trying to hurt their their testimony and their witness, the the world that's trying to discourage them. God, would you protect them? And so here we literally are calling in air support, and and we know God cares and God wants, but, but God sometimes waits for us to pray before he acts. And if we could pray, pray that prayer, then there would be one more step God would take and an answer to that prayer. And so Jesus says, God, will you protect them by the power of your name? And so we pray, God, protect my brother in Christ in Jesus' name. God, protect them from discouragement, temptation. Protect them from straying. Protect them from quitting church. Protect them from staying away too long. By the way, I want to encourage you, Right now, there are a lot of people who have stayed away way too long. Whether they've stayed away from in-person worship or whether they've stayed away from from online worship, uh, they've stayed away for way too long. And I want to encourage you to pray, God, will you protect them? God, will you bring them back to a place where they could start start the spiritual walk again and start to grow close to you again so we pray god protect them the next thing we want to pray is that they'll be filled with joy one of the things jesus says is is he's praying saying so that they would be filled with my joy and by the way that is something that christians should have sometimes i think we get a bad rap Uh, we could get this bad rap of of always being grumpy and always seem kind of angry and and because we take things a little too serious in life sometimes and we are at we are in serious business this is a a spiritual battle and there is a spiritual war going on around us that we can't see and and there are bad things happening around us And, and if we just sat there and crossed our arms and got all grumpy and frumpy all the time about it no one would want to hear a thing we have to say But I'm going to tell you right now that knowing you're going to heaven and knowing Jesus Christ gives you forgiveness and salvation, that should give you all the reason to have this amazing joy in your heart. And that should give you a reason. Instead of scowling and frowning all the time, that should give you a reason to be able to smile and have the joy of Christ in you not just some random joy but joy in christ and so i want to give you permission you christian to be happy to have joy in jesus to look to him and say i have reason to rejoice 
And Jesus says, I pray that they would have my joy. And so I start to think of the people in my life. God, will you help my kids know what it means to have joy in Christ and to be happy in Christ? Part of being happy in Christ is not needing other things to make me happy. It's being satisfied and filled with joy regardless of what else I have in my life, who else I have in my life. It means that I can have joy in Christ and I don't need anything else to be joyful. And maybe in my prayers, I think of the people that I know that could use a little more joy and I start praying that they would experience the joy of Christ and hold on to the joy of Christ and find the joy of Christ to be the strength in their life that they they need and and I just want to give you permission and I want to I want to bless you by saying be happy and joyful in Christ because you're going to heaven and you will get to spend eternity with him no matter what else is going on you can have that joy and so we need to be praying for each other to have joy and the next one is this to be more like Jesus. Now, in the New International Version, when Jesus prays, he prays that they would be sanctified by the truth. In the New Living uh, Translation, it will say this, make them holy by your truth, teach them by your word, which is truth. And so the idea of sanctify them and make them holy, it's the idea of that they will be set apart that they will be set apart and become more like Jesus. In fact, that's one of the ways that I would tell somebody, if they said, what does the word sanctification mean? I would say simply it means to become more and more like Jesus. I became a Christian, and in my personal story, I had a mouth that was uh, that was foul, uh, which is funny because now I'm a preacher. But man, back then when I first gave my life to Christ, I swore all the time. I said the F word in just about every sentence, and 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 before I became a Christian, I, I tried to cram in as many of those as I could into every sentence, and and I realized quickly that that God wanted me to speak differently and and so I began to clean up some things and become more like Christ in the way that I spoke and this is just one example of an area of my life where I started to give it to him and and try to obey him and try to change and 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 if you wanted to use a fancy word to describe how I went from being someone who swore all the time to someone who probably today I would say that I swear barely any of the time Uh, but I'd be lying if I said I never do, and I don't want to be a liar too, okay? But but what I would say is that God has been transforming me. He has been uh, sanctifying me. I've been going through this period of sanctification where I become more like Jesus in the way that I speak. And the more that happens in our lives, the less worldly we look, And the more we're separating ourselves out to be set apart for God and to look like Jesus. And so we need to be praying for one another in this way. God, will you make them holy? Now, all of us, especially those of us in Vernonia Church who live so close together, who rub shoulders together, who see each other everywhere at the store, in our community, at our church— We know a lot about each other without ever even asking. And a lot of you know a lot about me without even asking. And one thing that you'll find is the more you get to know me, the more you will see areas of my life that need sanctifying. And we pray for each other about them. God, will you help Sam to clean up the 5% swearing that he still does? God, will you help Sam to grow in this area of his Christian walk? God, will you help Sam? And I'm not saying you just pray for me, but but pray for one another that way. God, will you help, you know, my, my brother in Christ who is struggling in his marriage, help him to ask you for wisdom and to set himself apart in the way that he loves his wife instead of loving the world's ways. And God, will you help my my sister in Christ to 
to grow and to set herself apart as holy and to to save herself for marriage. And, and God, will you help her in that walk and in that struggle? And we begin to pray for each other that we would be more like Jesus. And in doing that, we're asking God bring air support in and cover cover the church, cover the Christians in our lives with prayer that will help them as they're in this battlefield between the word and the world. That's what Jesus did when he was pouring out his heart in prayer for you and for me. Now, I want to encourage you to pray uh, for this next category of people. And this next category of people is, is I want you to pray for your unchurched community. I, I want you to pray for your unchurched community. Now, when I talk about unchurched community, I'm talking about uh, people who don't go to church. If they did go to church a long time ago, it's been years since they went to church, and now they're unchurched, they're not going to a church. They might say they have a belief, but they're not really acting much of it out and they're not going to a church, they're unchurched. And if they're people who have never heard the gospel, never heard about anything about it and they need to hear about it, they're unchurched. And and if they're people who are anti-God or against God, they're unchurched. In other words, they're in the world. Jesus prayed for those who were taken out of the world, but now we're going to talk about how in Jesus' prayer, he also prayed for the people who were still in the world who have yet to be taken out of the world. And interestingly, as he tells us to pray like that, what he's going to say is is that that still involves the Christians, that it still involves you and me. And so he's going to pray for them, but he's going to pray for us in the way that we reach them. And and I want to just bring you to story number three. Story number three is the story of a shepherd who goes and battles it out with a wolf, who bleeds to save the sheep. And what a picture. I mean, we have this picture of a shepherd and sheep all through the New Testament when it describes Jesus. Jesus was the good shepherd, and, and we're the sheep, and, and Jesus gives his life for the sheep, and Jesus go, comes to this world, and, and he searches for the sheep. If he loses one sheep, he, he pr- makes sure the 99 out of the 100 are protected, and he goes out to find the one. And, and there's this picture of Jesus being the good shepherd shepherd. He says, I'm the gate of the sheep pen. And and you get a picture of Jesus making himself the gate that the sheep come in and out and the wolf that wants to come in has to go through him. And and, and there's all this imagery and visual of a sheep and a shepherd. And, And Jesus then says throughout the New Testament that once, once he's gone, once he's ascended into heaven, He gives it to pastors and preachers and ministers and to his church to continue to accomplish the mission he started. And so he says he's the good shepherd and he describes church leaders as shepherds and he describes all of us who are followers and disciples and Christians as sheep. But he also kind of intermingles this imagery of us going out and helping find other sheep who are lost and, and who are out there. But there's also an image of Satan and his demons. And we even find that idea here in Jesus' prayer. Satan and his demons are described as a wolf. They're described as as a wolf that comes sometimes disguised as a sheep. It will come into the church. And, and what does the wolf do when the wolf comes into the sheep pen? He just starts killing sheep. And, and he goes out for blood and he's looking to eat it. And, uh, and, and Satan is described as a wolf that comes into the sheep pen. And, and some of the unchurched in our life are, are people who were a part of a, of a church. And a wolf came in, whether it was a leader 
leader who became a wolf, whether it was a church member who became a wolf, but somewhere the wolf started devouring and they were discouraged and they went away and now they're unchurched. Now they, they're not walking with God because a, a wolf was ravaging. And sometimes the wolf comes from without. And what we have is not just a picture of the world versus the word, but the shepherds and the sheep versus the wolf. And Jesus wants us to go out and pull people out of the world, even in the midst of wolves that are out there. And so Jesus prays. And one of the prayers that he wants us to be praying when we think of the unchurched, and the people who have been attacked by the wolf, the people who are continuing to be under the influence of the wolf, the, the people who are being hurt by the wolf, he wants us to pray that they will hear the gospel through us. That they will hear the message of the gospel, this powerful gospel built on the powerful name of Jesus, built on his death, his resurrection, and the power of the living God who is active and working and who wants us to go out and to share the message. In Romans 10, 15, it says this, the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. Uh, the whole verse in uh, verses 14 to 15 says but how can people how, how can people call on him to save them unless they believe in him and how can they believe in him if they've never heard about him and how can they hear about them uh, unless someone tells them and how can anyone go and tell them without being sent that is why the scriptures say how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news and and the message here is this that you and I need need to have beautiful feet but we need to get out there and to share the good news we need to get out there and to to share the gospel with people and there's two ways we can do that one way is a way that uh, it takes a little more work takes a little more time takes a little more boldness one way basically is we go and tell we we say you know what uh, i'm gonna have i'm gonna have some coffee with my friend and i'm gonna share christ with him you know invite someone out to coffee sit down with them sit down with your bible and say here's what god has to say about salvation and how you can be forgiven and and how you can be pulled out of this world that is dying and that is that is doomed to destruction and you can have eternal life in Jesus Christ and that's the go and tell method where I go and I tell somebody about Christ Jesus said go make disciples of all nations and so that's one of the way ways that we can do that another way that we can do it is what I call the come and see method where we invite people to come and see kind of like uh, Philip did with Nathaniel he said come and see I, I've discovered the one who's the Christ come and see this Jesus and 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 some of us we might struggle with the go and tell but come and see we can do that. We can share a message online and we can say, come and see. Maybe God has something to say to you. We can say, come and see and invite someone to Easter Sunday. You know, we could say, come and see, come and hear that God might be speaking and, and, and maybe you'll hear something that will bless you. Come and see is where we invite someone to church, where we invite someone to come and hear the gospel somewhere. That's the come and see method. So either we're going and telling and we're coming in and seeing but Jesus prayer was that we would share the gospel uh, and that people around us that our community around us that our community outside these walls would hear the gospel message through us whether we're going and telling or whether we're inviting them to come and see and the next prayer is this that we pray we pray that they will see the gospel in us not only will they hear the gospel in us, but they'll see the gospel in us. Jesus prays in John 17, 20 to 21. He says, I'm praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one. Jesus is talking to the Father. As you, and I, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you, and may they be in us, so that the world will believe that you sent me. 
And, and what Jesus is saying here is he's saying that, 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 Father, I pray that they will be people who, when others look at them, they will see that I am in them. That they will see that, that I'm at work in them. They will see sanctification happening. They will see changes happening. They will see growth happening. They will see that, that we are becoming uh, people who are not people of the world. That we live with a higher standard, with a higher moral, with a, with, with, with a higher perspective than the people of the world. Not, not in a way that they see us being holier than thou or or thinking we're self-righteous, but that they will look at us and they will say, that looks like Jesus. And when they look at us, they will say, that looks like it has better results than my way. Maybe there's something valuable about knowing Jesus. You might know the old cliche, right? That, that don't tell me how much you love me, show me how much you love me. You know, don't tell me how much you love Jesus or believe in Jesus. Show me that you're following Jesus. And, and that's what I'm encouraging you to, to pray for. When you pray for, for, for the people outside the church, pray that the church and Vernonia Church and the Christians of Vernonia Church will be sharing a message of the gospel that we'll be going out and telling, that we'll be inviting people to come and see, but also that we'll be a church filled with people who are demonstrating what it looks like to follow Jesus, not only in word, but in the way that we're living and in the things that we're doing. And the next prayer is this, to pray that they will believe the gospel. Now this one, we're specifically praying for the people in the world who are of the world, that they might come to a place where they believe in Christ and get pulled out of the world so that they can know eternal life and heaven and all the hope and all the promises and all the blessings that come with knowing Jesus. Jesus prays, uh, uh, G Jesus prays for them that he says uh, in, in his prayer, he says, Father, I pray that they would be one and, and we will be one and, and that you will be in me and I will be in them. And he prays all this and he says, so that the world will believe. If we as a church can get our act together, I, I don't know about the whole world, but I I know that if we as a church can be one in Jesus, then it says people will believe. And that's what Jesus wants. He wants people to believe. In 2 Peter 3, 9, it says, The Lord does not want anyone to be destroyed. That's not in God's will. He, he wants everyone to come to a place that they repent, that they turn to God. Uh, in Romans 10, 9, it says, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And God wants us all to get to a point to where we believe so that we can start down the path of salvation. He, he wants us all to be saved, and, and he wants us to be praying for the people of around us to come to know the salvation in the gospel of Jesus. He wants the people around us to experience that. And no matter how bad the people around us are, how broken the people around us are, how sinful the people around us are, he wants us to be praying, God, will you help them come to know you? Will you help them come to a place where they believe and their life and their family tree and and their hopes and their dreams are all transformed by Jesus. I dream of a Vernonia, our little town, that one day this little town will become known as a town filled with people who are walking with Christ, who want to know Jesus, who want to go deeper in their relationship with him. I know that realistically, there will be always a lot of people here in our town that that won't. But but I dream of the day where the numbers go from from there are more unchurched than churched to a place to where almost this entire town has left the world and gone with the word. 
and gone with the gospel. And that's my prayer. God, will you reach Vernonia, this community outside of Vernonia Church? Will you bring this entire community to a place of belief? I pray that for my neighbors. I pray that for the people I know who are unchurched. I pray that for the people who come to church who have yet to go through the actions of of making first-time decisions to follow Jesus or or making a commitment to repent or or making a commitment to baptism. I pray that that all those people would, would go through all that so that they can begin their walk with Christ and and I pray constantly for for people to come to know Christ through the gospel so that the last prayer so that they would come to know God personally and that was Jesus goal that's our goal by leading people to Christ by leading them to Christ they get to know God their creator and their father. Jesus says, I have revealed you to them and I will continue to do so. That was Jesus' goal, to reveal God, to create a situation where we could have a a relationship with him. And so I've gone through a whole bunch of points and a whole bunch of prayers and And we've talked about praying for Christians and praying for Vernonia Church. And we've talked about praying for for unchurched and for non-Christians. And and when it all comes together, I want you this morning to have the heart, the heart of God, the heart of Jesus who prays for the saved and the unsaved, the heart of Jesus who wants to see you and I accomplish the work that he gave us to do. You know, as a church, we're not a club. As a church, we're not a Jesus fan club. We are soldiers in a battle. We are followers of Christ, messengers from God who are still here so that we can serve God so that we could pray for one another to grow, so that we could pray for this community, so that we might reach it. And by the way, those of you who are on online worship, your communities, whether it's Verdonia or not, that, that's a community God wants you to start thinking about, reaching out to. The online community, God wants you to start thinking about, reaching out and praying for them. And I want to encourage you to become the friend who prays. I started out with that story, story number one, the friend who prays, and I want to finish with story number one, the friend who prays. The friend who prays and and who begins to pray for the people around them, praying for the church, praying for the Christians in the church, praying for your pastor, praying for one another. I want to encourage you, be the friend who prays, who calls in air support, and, and, and who calls in God's mighty hand into the life of your church and into the community as your church reaches out and who prays because we need the shepherd to cover us. We, we need the shepherd to protect us and to fight for us and to cover us with his blood. A church who prays. I want you to be that friend who prays. And maybe your next step this week is to say, I'm going to pray with someone this week. Call them up. Ask them about their family and pray for them. And maybe your next step is to pray for someone outside the church this week. Maybe you pray for them that they might receive your invitation to come to Easter Sunday, whether online or in person. But specifically, I want to encourage you to begin praying for someone in your life who's unchurched. Write their name down and pray for them every day this week. I want to encourage you to join me in learning to pray for others. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we just thank you. We want to thank you for praying for us. We want to thank you for Jesus' prayer here. 
And God, I pray that you'll help us to have the heart of Jesus as we pray for one another and as we pray for the people in our community. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to enter into a time now where we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper together. You know, the Lord's Supper is a time where we celebrate what Jesus did for us. No matter what we're talking about, whether we're talking about prayer and praying for ourselves, praying for those we love, praying for others, we're always going to come back to a time uh, that we have designated during our online worship time where where we celebrate the Lord's Supper together. Uh, this is where we remember Jesus and his death on the cross for us. You know, God spent a lot of time thinking about others. All throughout history, the, the whole story of history, the, the story of the scriptures from beginning to end is the story of God thinking about us, God caring about us, God, God thinking of a way to save us and a way to redeem us, a way to forgive us, a way to give us eternal life. And even during his ministry, Jesus prayed for others. He, he prayed for people who needed healing. He prayed for his disciples. He prayed for the people he loved and the people he cared. And he even, we saw during today's message, he even prayed for those of us thousands of years later who would come to believe because of the message of the disciples and because of the scriptures. And so Jesus built his ministry on praying for others, and he even prayed for others while on the cross. I mean, among all the statements that he made on the cross, uh, statements like, Father, forgive them. I mean, that was a prayer for us who need forgiveness. That, that was a prayer specifically for those who were crucifying him. And, and yet we remember that he was being crucified for us too, that he was being crucified to take care of our sins. And, and when he was on the cross and said, it is finished, that was a prayer where he was saying, I've finished the work of forgiveness. I've finished the work of redemption. And so I want to encourage you, think about Jesus on the cross how he did that for you and for me. That was always God's plan to do that for you and for me. He was thinking about others. And think about how he prayed for you specifically. Father, forgive them. And he prayed for you specifically when he said, it is finished. Because what he was saying is that now payment for your sins is done and finished and complete. And so let's celebrate that together as we remember what Jesus did on the cross. When we take the Lord's Supper, what we're doing is we're taking some bread. I have this little Lord's Supper kit. And so I'm going to take the little uh, wafer out and I'm going to eat it. And, and, and this represents the body of Jesus that was broken for us on the cross. And so let's do that together. And then we're going to take the juice. If you have juice at home and, and crackers and juice or bread and juice, you can join us here and, and celebrating together. Or if you have one of these worship kits. And, and the juice represents the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross for us. And there again, the key words, for us, for you. He, he did this for you. And so as we remember the blood of Christ, we're remembering that he did this for you and for me. And so uh, let's celebrate together. And I'd like to encourage you to pray with me now. Father in heaven, we come before you and we're so thankful that we can celebrate Jesus, forgiveness, his love, his mind towards thinking of us, even even when it, he, what he did was so long ago, he was able to think of you and me and, and, and he was able to think of, of all of us who have sin that he was taking on to his shoulders and, and onto himself on the cross. We're so thankful. We're so grateful for what Jesus does for us. And, and God, help us to take that same heart into our hearts. As we remember, you want us to be thinking not only about ourselves and our own spiritual life, but about others and about the rest of the, the church and about the people that, that you still have yet to reach. 
God, we thank you for Jesus and for his care for us. And we pray that you give us the heart of Jesus in the way we care for others. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, before we dive into anything else, I want to do a quick reminder that Easter is coming. And I'm so excited for Easter this year. You know what? Easter is 35 days away. It's uh, April 4th. And we're going to have an online Easter worship service for those of you who who, who are still uh, feeling like you need to be going to online worship. And, and we're going to keep doing online worship anyways uh, all along. But, but we are going to have a special Easter worship service. We're going to have in-person Easter worship services too at 9 30 and 11 o'clock a.m. But Easter's coming and I want to we're talking about praying for others right today and, and I want to encourage you to make prayer a part of the way that you're preparing for Easter. Please pray for those people who are going to come to Vernonia Church, whether it's online or in person, be praying for the unchurched who join us that day, that, that God might touch their hearts in a special way and that we might be able to be a special blessing to them. I also want to encourage you to pray for yourself. Pray that, God, will you prepare me to be ready to worship and, and to be ready to celebrate the resurrection and the power of the resurrection in my life. I mean, that's what Easter is all about. Easter's this season where, where we just remember something that we remember every Sunday, by the way. We remember, we worship this living God who died and who rose from the dead, who ascended into heaven, who one day returns for us, and, and, and we celebrate that every Sunday. But Easter is just a special day that, that we really go, go big with the celebration. And so it's coming up. It's 35 days away. And I want to encourage you to be praying. I also want to encourage you, if uh, you haven't done so yet, join us in the Easter fast. We've already started. It's not too late to jump in and, and join us from here on out. And, and what it is, is we choose something we're going to fast from, something we might miss. It, it, it could be anything. Uh, it could be uh, c coffee, sugar. It could be Facebook or, or, or social media, except for Sunday when you come to worship if you're doing worship on Facebook but but it could be anything and uh, I want to encourage you to, 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 to join us in that fast and when you miss that thing you're supposed to pray well what do you pray for well you could pray for what we talked about today pray for others pray for your church pray for other Christians and pray for the unchurched who will be coming on that day so just be praying let's cover the church and our community and our online community in prayer uh, through this season. So Easter's coming up. And, and you know what? I want to continue worship right now by moving into a time where we're going to receive an offering. And so if you're at home, you're clapping. And we want to we want to just talk about this because, hey, we're getting ready for Easter. We're doing some stuff. We're, we're, we're getting out there and we're doing work and uh, we're, we're seeing people give their life to Christ. By the way, last weekend, uh, last Sunday, we had a baptism. Somebody, a uh, 17 year old young man gave his life to Christ. It was cool. And so you know what, Vernonia Church? God is using you. Uh, he's using you, those of you online, because that young man started coming to, to Vernonia Church online first. And, and then he began to drive from out of town to come here to celebrate in person. And, uh, and, and it led to him giving his life to Christ. And so what an awesome thing. Vernonia Church, you're awesome. I want to say thank you to those of you who are giving. Uh, there's a lot of ways that you can be giving. You can be using our offering envelopes. If you have any of those, you could go online at any time to www.vernonia.church and hit the Give tab. It, it will take you to our Tithely account. It's a completely secure way to give to Vernonia Church. And so I want to encourage you, uh, if, if, if you want to do it that way, to go for that. You could also give at any time by texting the word G. E I V E the word give to 503-376-6646. That's text the word give to 503-376-6646. There are all kinds of ways that you can give. And I want to say thank you for giving and thank you for letting God use you to help this ministry grow and to help our church reach out to our community. And you know what? Most of all, thanks for giving 
just to worship God and tell him that you're putting him first. And so I'd like to pray for you uh, and especially for those of you who are giving. And let's pray for what we do as we give, that God will use it to bless others. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we just thank you that you continually bless, that you continually work, that you you continually bring people to know Jesus and and lead people into baptism and and into first-time decisions through Vernonia Church. God, it's so exciting to be a part of a church and a ministry that's, that's watching you work. And I pray that you will take what we give now in, in support of this ministry, in support of this work, I pray that you'll take it and you will multiply it uh, beyond what we could ever imagine. God, thank you for taking care of this ministry. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody at home said together, amen. Hey, one thing I forgot to mention is, uh, and before I finish up, one thing I forgot to mention was if you want to join us for the Easter fast, there's a link down below and you can click that and you can sign up for the Easter fast and let us know what you're fasting from. By the way, some of you did that and uh, the, the, (laughs) the little slot where you could write what you were fasting from was kind of it was kind of funky and would only let you do numbers. And some of you cracked me up. You just told me when you were doing it. Uh, if you want to go back and redo that, just let us know what you're fasting from. You should be able to type that in there now. And so if you want to join us in the Easter fast, hit that link and, and or go to the Vernonia website. There's a link there that you could use to sign up for Easter fast. All right, let's finish up this uh, worship time. Uh, all of you, I want you to join me at the count of three. We're going to declare it's been a great day. All All right, you ready? One, two, three. It's been a great day. I hope you have a great day.